What's up guys, welcome to another video and today we're going to be talking about state in React. But before we get started, just wanted to kind of point out there that we are using Create React app for this entire playlist. If you don't know how to use it, definitely check out the first video that gets you started with it. Without any further ado, let's get our hands dirty. First thing first, I'm going to go ahead and create a very basic component. All right, there we guys go. We have our app component that is being exported and we are importing React. We are extending the app component from the React that component that we are importing from the React itself. All right, so the first thing that comes into mind is what is the state? Well, uh, I've seen a lot of description and confusion out there. The way I'd like to describe it for you guys is a state is a plain old JavaScript object. If you've worked with object before, then you definitely know what I'm talking about, okay? So let's go ahead and define our state. Once again, it is a very plain old JavaScript object that looks like this. And you go ahead, you can add as many data as you want. And there you guys go, I have age, you can even have a message, whatever you guys feel like. Just look at that, a very basic JavaScript object that you have within your component. The only key about it is you cannot name any, anything you want, such as data or such as user. It has to be named state. But one thing I also would like to keep in mind is this entire data that you have right there, which is the state, which once again, it's just a plain JavaScript object. Well, the whole reason you need to have it, it's going to be what holds the entire data about this component that we have call app. So any data that we need for this component needs to be inside our state. Right now, if you want to display any data within your JSX, you just use to use the this keyword to refer to it like this. You can do this as say that message. And if we go ahead and, and run this application, I'm going to open my console. Uh, I'm going to run this application by using npm start in my script starting. And it's going to take a second. And now if I go over localhost 3000, I should be able to see something that looks like this. All right, before we go back to our code, I'd like to open the inspect element and go over the console tab because we're going to go ahead and log our state right now. Okay. All right. So check this out. This piece of data is coming from my state. Remember, I'm accessing uh, a key from my state, which is the object called message. And I'm using this message to display it inside my JSX. And of course, if you guys want to guess, you can do the same thing for getting the username like so. And if we open the app, we should be able to see our username is being displayed as well. And there you go. You see, we have username, access and so on. All right. This is great. This is how we access data from the state by accessing it like that. But what about if we wanted to change some data inside our state? How can we do this? Well, in order for us to do this, I'm going to go ahead and build a click button. Uh, I'm going to create first a button that's going to say uh, click. And whenever I click on this button, the goal is going to be to fire a function. I'm going to create a function that's going to be incrementing the count. So what I mean, the, what I mean is whatever this count is, for example, currently right now it's equal to zero. So whenever I click this button, it will go and keep incrementing my count from one, two, three, four, five, and you guys can guess the remaining one. And whenever I click this function, uh, this button here, I'm going to fire this function right there. So I'm going to go here and call this function like so. All right, so now before we go any further, let's console log and making sure that this event is actually being fired. So I'm going to console log something called hello world. Here's what I'm expecting to get. I'm expecting whenever I click this button, I'm expected to see this function fire and I should see something like console log hello world within my terminal. Let's give it a try. All right, here's our button when I clicked it. And as you guys can see, I'm now seeing something called hello world. All right, so the question is, what is, how can we change data inside our state? If you think about it, you might be like, okay, if I want to change the username, I need to do something like this, and I can change the username to equal to Patrick, whatever you guys guess. Well, this is called mutation, and React doesn't like the fact that you are mutating the data. Well, 
What if I wanted to change any data within my state? Well, there's only one way that you can do that is by using a function that the Create React app uses for you. It's something called set state, and you pass it an object itself that you can pass any of the key value. For example, if I want to change username, age, message, whichever one that I need within my state, I can just pass that key over here and update it with any new value that I'd like to change. For example, if I change uh, Aximus Sterling, equal to Patrick. Now, whenever I click this button, it will be able and, and change this key property called username within my state. Once again, this is the only way that you can change data within your state by using this that set state. But now check this out. When I try to run this, remember I said this is the only way you can change data, but check this out. When I try to click this button, it won't work as expected. Let's give it a try. Check this out. When I clicked it, my entire application break and said we cannot read property set state of undefined which they're technically saying that this that set state that i just say which is the only way you can change data within your state is actually something that is not available well why is this well the whole reason is because of the this keyword the this keyword is not referring to anything let's give it a try let's go ahead and console log it i'm going to go ahead and console log this just for you guys to see what is inside this this keyword okay all right check it out when i go ahead here we refresh the page again and now when i click on this button check it out the this keyword is actually equal to undefined which means there's nothing nothing inside the this keyword well how can we add something within the this keyword in order for us to do this we need to go ahead and take this function and bind it by this. It might sound complicated, but trust me guys, there's a better way to do it, but the bottom line is, wherever we are calling this function, we need to bind the this keyword that is inside of this to equal to the global this keyword that have everything available into it. All right, I'm gonna bind it by this. Remember, we haven't done anything within this function, and let's click it again to see now what is this is equal to. Remember, previously it equal to undefined. But now when I click it, you see, now it has access to a lot of value within our state. And now also notice uh, our value is now being updated with the new value, which is awesome. The bottom line is whenever you have the this keyword, always make sure that it is binding by the global this in order for the this keyword that is inside of function to now have the same type of access as the global this keyword. Now, all of this might sound confusing with the bind and everything on how we change data within our state. There is an easy way to do that, and that easy way is by doing this, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and we move the bind this, which might sound all crazy, and we're gonna use, instead of using a normal ES6 for error function, we're gonna use an arrow function like this. And remember, we're only using a fat row function. And once we are using a fat row function, we don't even need to worry about binding the this keyword. It instantly referring to the global this keyword. And if we try this again and see if it works, let's give it a try. And, and there you guys go. If I click on this, you will see this changing. And let's click on it again. And there you guys go. You see now we have this value is equal to Patrick, which is fantastic. So the bottom line is, guys, be mindful. Always use the arrow function if you want to change any data within our state. So you don't have to use the bind this keyword. All right. So the next step that we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and display the account just for you guys to see. So I'm going to go ahead and hit have account. And now I'm going to access this count within my state count. What I'm going to do is instead of having this button to change the username, I'm going to actually have head over to this function. I'm going to have it increment this count. Instead of changing the username, I'm going to grab the whatever the state was of the count. So I'm going to grab this value. Whatever the state of the count was, I'm going to add one to it, which means here's what I'm expecting to happen. Okay. So. I'm going to update the count property, but before I update it, I'm going to go ahead and check whatever the previous state was and then take that count and add one to it, which means if this was three, it's going to add one to it and it's going to equal to four and you guys can guess the idea. So it's going to keep incrementing by one and one and one and one. Okay, let's give this one a try. Let's, let's see. 
and there you guys go you see it's working as expected but there is one issue here it's not really an issue it's just a better way to do things now what I'm talking about here is whenever you are using some previous value in your state to do some logic then you need to think about a better way to do this because the this set state function is an async operation what I mean by async operation is it's something that you can't really be certain it's gonna execute at the time that you need it so in order to solve this issue here's what we're going to do instead of using an object we're gonna use a callback in self okay so we're gonna use a callback and what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna return an object and this object is going to be of the key value pair that we'd like to change in this case it's going to be count but how do we get access to the previous value if you guys remember we are using a callback and this callback also can take a parameter that get access to the private state so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use all right whatever the private state was get the count value and plus one to it so the whole reason we have to do this is just to be really guaranteed that hey whenever we click the button it's going to update the count to one this all hasting operation is going to finish and then we can continue to add one to it and keep going forward and let's give it a try there you go click it's working as expected and we know for sure that this count is going to wait before it add one to it this almost sounds confusing but the bottom line is guys is whenever you are using any previous value from the state to do some operation you need to think about having them wrap inside a callback all right now you might be on okay still what is this previous state well this previous state is any data that were previously inside your state okay so let's do that previous state I'm gonna go ahead and log them just for you guys to see what I'm talking about and there you go okay so when I go now and click the button I should see how the state was and I should also see compare it with whatever the new value of the count is just for you guys to see what's happening okay all right check this out when I click on this it goes ahead and update it with one but here's my previous state here's how it was the count was zero and now remember now it's equal to one and I still have all these value which is the same one and stuff like that so this is how we can see the previous state and then we can we can choose to add whatever value we want to add to it okay guys remember this is state it's just a plain JavaScript object and this is how we put value inside of it well there is another way that we can declare our state I'm gonna copy the same value and the other way is it declared inside a constructor okay so we're gonna go ahead and have a constructor like that use the super keyword and instead of having this uh, state like that we're gonna add the keyword to it this that said state there's not really a difference between having the state inside a constructor. Some people like having it inside a constructor. Some people don't like it in, in having it inside a constructor. So whichever way that you consider using, just keep that in mind. This is also available and you can do that as well. And if you try to run the application, it should be working as expected. And there you go. It's updating the count from one to something higher. But there's one thing I also would like to point out here, guys, about state, which is very, very powerful, okay? So check this out. Whenever I'm updating the value, which the value is being updated inside my state, but it instantly get injected into the DOM, which is one of the beauty about it. So the bottom line is whenever you guys use the this at state to update any value inside your state, well, this entire function we render every single time that a new value inside our state update it well to be able to see this in action i'm going to go ahead and console log something here that said re-rendering uh, the app again just for you guys to see what i'm talking about okay so once again anytime that any value inside the state change this entire re-render function is going to execute over and over and over of course it renders first but check this out when i click the state this we render function execute again and keep going you see it we render and we render and we render and we render and over and over so the bottom line is every single time any value within your state change this entire we render function going to execute over and over and over and over keep that in mind whenever you work with state and this that said state I'm going to go ahead and leave a couple of notes that we learned about state uh, by putting every single one of them inside a comment. One thing we learned so far is state is a plain old JavaScript object. There's nothing magic about it except an object that, you know, you put values into it. But we also learned that every single time that something changes within that object, the entire re-render function re-render again over and over. 
the only thing about state is state is private to the component which means if you have a state with for this component the only if you have a state for this component the only component that will be able to update the state is this component no other component will be able to update it except this component or the component might be able to have access to read only to the state but the only one that can update this component of this state is this component remember that state holds information about the component so whenever we need data about a particular component we need to have a state for this component now keep that in mind of not having to use state for a lot of a lot of a lot of other component sometimes you can have functional component uh, that can just render things you pass but just keep that in mind state holds information about a component and the other thing i'd like to point out is state keep track of information for example we see earlier that we had a count that was incrementing from zero to one so state keep a track of hey however this count was and what would you like to do with it so state is really really awesome guys i would highly recommend you use state for your component whatever data you want for this component and ladies and gentlemen this is everything i had for you if you have any questions or concern or things that we haven't discussed within this video please leave them in the comment below and looking forward to see you guys in the next session